Welcome to today's class. The topic for today is properties of inlay wax. Now there are totally two types, uh, two classes. Okay, your class one inlay wax is used directly in the oral cavity, while class two is used in the laboratory. It's also known as indirect technique. So when you consider uh, the flow according to ISO, see both should have a flow of 70 to 90 percent at 45 degrees Celsius, and at 37 degrees Celsius, class two should not flow more than one degree, and 30 class one should not flow more than one percentage so now when you consider class one as i mentioned earlier it is used directly in the mouth this type of wax tends to melt easily when it's around 45 degrees celsius and this temperature is tolerated by the patient so once you prepare your cavity what happens is you melt this wax place it in the mouth and since it tends to cool okay the wax cools down and hardens at 37 degrees celsius that is oral cavity once it hardens and cools down then the dentist would then bring about carving and shaping inside the oral cavity class 2 this type of hardens okay it tends to harden at 30 degrees celsius which is at room temperature so this is ideally suited for more at laboratory the flow characteristics are not suitable okay this is not very highly suitable to use it in the mouth the thermal conductivity of these two waxes is low that is it does not conduct heat very good it takes time to heat the wax uniformly and cool it to the body or room temperature coefficient of thermal expansion of inlay wax is very high it has a linear expansion of 0.7 percentage which increase in the temperature of 20 degrees celsius its thermal changes are higher than that of any other dental material this property is more significant in direct technique because contraction of the pattern can occur when it is taken from the mouth to room temperature uh, so what basically they are trying to say is see uh, there is some kind of uh, changes okay there is some kind of changes as the temperature changes so when you heat the uh, it takes a long time to heat this wax then you place it in the mouth so in the oral cavity is around 37 degrees celsius while our room temperature is around 30 degrees celsius so when you take from the oral cavity when you prepare the cavity put the wax that it has cooled it has hardened and you have done all the carving and then when you take it out okay so from 37 degrees you're getting again to 30 degrees celsius so again there's some kind of cooling of your temperature because of that your inlay wax can again shrink a bit so that is what they are saying is contraction of the pattern okay the pattern which we have created it might shrink when it comes from 37 to 30 degrees celsius that is why thermal properties are important so if the wax is allowed to cool under pressure its thermal properties are changed when reheated the linear uh, temperature is increased the temperature of the dye and the method used to apply pressure on the wax as it solidifies tends to in influence the thermal properties so wax distortion is the most serious problem in inlay wax okay so what is wax distortion that is if there's any deformity in your wax okay once you've prepared your pattern and you've done all your carving and then once there's any difference or any changes or deformation it's called wax distortion so this is uh, the one of the most serious problems in inlay wax it is due to the release of stresses okay so again as i mentioned earlier from 37 when you bring your to room temperature it will cool so what happens is some kind of contraction and then you have some gas bubbles change of shape during mold molding and from because of manipulation when you're carving cooling and when you're trying to remove there can be mild chipping or mild difference in your wax pattern the amount of residual stress depends upon the method of forming the pattern, its handling, length of time and temperature of the storage of your wax. So wax distortion, as I told you earlier, what is the cause of distortion? First is change in temperature, the stress release of stress. So it might undergo contraction when you're handling it, when you're removing it, maybe there's some kind of, uh, you know, this kind of chip, there's a bend somewhere. So all this would lead to wax distortion so factors causing distortion under control of the operator cannot be totally eliminated distortion of the wax can occur if the wax is not at uniform temperature when inserted in the cavity some parts of the wax may be very uh, soft some may be hard okay so if you do not uh, heat the wax uniformly throughout then you can have this lot of distortion if the wax is not held under uniform pressure during cooling that is one part there's more pressure and the other part there's less pressure so because of that what happens is change in pressure at the single wax so that could lead to again distortion if fresh wax is melted and added in an area of deficiency the added wax will introduce stress during cooling 
during carving some molecules of wax will be disturbed okay because of that there will be some kind of stress in order to avoid it minimal carving and change in temperature minimal storage pattern invest immediately that is once you remove the inlay wax from the mouth try not storing it for a long time okay try to invest it as much as uh, invested as soon as possible and try to convert it into a, a cast as soon as possible okay so you need to reduce the storage time and store in refrigerator if necessary some relaxation and distortion of pattern does occur no matter how careful you are okay it cannot be totally eliminated this can only be reduced to a point which is not of clinical importance so again we know what all causes this deformation right first is the way you handle it the way you store it okay and the amount of carving if you do a lot of carving that will tend to lead to stresses so try doing minimal carving okay try not storing it for a very long period of time outside the mouth try to invest uh, the uh, the inlay wax as soon as possible and if you're storing it do it under refrigerator again you need to keep in mind that you cannot completely eliminate it but yes you can reduce it to a very significant amount so with this we come to the end of today's lecture